important part of a complete aftermarket accessory kit. Let's talk about barrels first. Barrels are generally made out of African blackwood or cocoa bolo. There's other materials that they're made out of exotic woods, but the exotic woods tend to be softer and tend to change too much over time and don't stay stable. Most clarinet players use the blackwood barrel, though I believe that every clarinet player should have a blackwood and a cocoa bolo in their case. The cocoa bolo has a warmer sound and it changes with time because it's a softer wood. The change is all usually all for the better. Let's talk about the taper. There's several tapers that we use on a barrel. One is with the top being smaller and the bottom being bigger. That's called the standard taper. Usually you go, the top is the same size as the clarinet mouthpiece and the bottom is the same size as the clarinet. There's the reverse taper where the top is bigger and the bottom is smaller. There's also the double taper where it tapers from the top to the middle and then back out to the bottom. And, it, and the largest part could be either on the top or the bottom. It's also possible to go inside and cut different parts inside the barrel to fix certain tessituras or certain particular notes on the clarinet. So you can actually tune the clarinet with your barrel. So if you have a clarinet that's not playing quite in tune, try an aftermarket barrel and sit with the barrel maker and see if you just can't make it better. The outside shape is also important. These are the first two barrels that uh, my partner and I ever made. And as you can see, they're quite different in shape. Our later shapes have been more like this. If you look at a buffet barrel, you'll find that the outside of the barrel is almost perfectly round. What we found is that where the weight is in the barrel really affects the sound and the intonation and the feel of the barrel. So we like to put a little bit more weight on the bottom. We think it makes a lot of difference uh, with the barrels. Of all the people that have tried our barrels, I think maybe only two or three people haven't bought them and uh, they seem to be very popular because of that. Uh, so the shape matters, and I'm not saying uh, my barrels are the only ones to buy. There's plenty of good barrels out there. There's plenty of good barrel makers, and uh, you should try some of everybody's. Next thing I like to do is talk about bells. In many ways, a bell is like a, a uh, stereo speaker. The size and the flare of the bell controls the dispersion of the sound. Also, a bell can control pitch or the whole overtone series of the clarinet. Many bells, the clarinet comes to this point and the flare immediately starts from there. And that's how most mass-produced clarinet bells are made. In some cases, a maker will bring the the bore of the clarinet into the bell a certain way and in that case they change the, over, the whole overtone series of the clarinet which makes different notes more important than other notes. Uh, also there's the weight, the whole weight of the bell. Here's a very heavy bell. You can see it's got a thick bottom, it's got a thick middle, and it's got a thick top. It's very heavy in my hand. Here's another one, a little lighter. I can feel it in my hand. And here's the one I use. It's very light, and it's a little shorter than most barrels. And we did that because my B, my middle B is a little flat. So that helps the B a lot. It also its lightness makes the sound very centered. Everybody that's played this bell has loved this bell. You can see the difference between a custom-made bell and a manufactured bell from an instrument maker. The shape's different. The flare is different. The weight's different. Thickness in areas of the bell 
also make a difference. Most people that like a very dark tone would buy an aftermarket bell that's very, very thick at the bottom, like this one. This one plays very, very dark, and many players like that dark sound. This one plays very, very centered. Not bright, but centered, and the sound really shoots out on this. Usually with a darker barrel, the, uh, because of the way the overtones are muffled, uh, the sound won't travel quite as far, but uh, it's a preferred sound for many people. You also want to consider with barrels and bells, when you purchase them, what your purpose is in playing. Are you, are you playing in a symphony hall where it's fairly reverberant? Are you playing in a pit where it's all carpeted? Are you playing in a studio where you play for the microphone? Are you playing for a, a live situation? That's also going to help determine what kind of a barrel and bell you buy. So. I hope I've just opened your eyes to the importance of these aftermarket products. We could go into them into a lot more detail. Uh, there's theories of making them all. Uh, we have our theory that's, uh, you know, protected and everybody protects their own theory. But I hope that I've given you an idea that there are options out there.